willingness to talk tonight. My pleasure. Um, Mary asked me if I would speak about backpacking out west, and that's a pretty broad uh, ask. I started out in 1975. Uh, I was invited to join two friends to hike the 450-mile section of, of the Pacific Crest Trail that crosses Washington State. I had no experience. They had both done section hikes in California and Oregon, uh, were chased off pretty often due to high snow that year. We started out expecting to go 10 days before being able to resupply with a little extra food for insurance. Our packs were in the 80 pound range. So that's my mistake number one. I'm going to talk tonight about the Pacific Crest Trail a little bit, the Wind River Range trips, Sawtooth Mountain trips, Yellowstone National Park trip, Alaska, Glacier Park in Waterton, and Beartooth Absaroka Range. So Pacific Crest Trail, it's a good trail, can be muddy with snow. We did 38 days of that trail from mid-July to, to late August. Uh, it's in the Cascade Mountain Range, and the trail ends after eight miles into Canada. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's lots of up and down elevation from 2,000 to 8,000 generally. A lot of misty rain on the west side of the mountains. Uh, a lot of times we were actually in the clouds. Fishing was somewhat limited, resupplying uh, at highway crossings, sometimes at ski resorts, but very limited. Uh, there were no real campsites uh, and no restrictions on, on where you're camping other than uh, distance from water. I think we only saw deer and marmots were the major game we saw. This is where the, the trail crosses the state of Washington. You see the northern portion of it, you're crossing over to the east side of the mountains, which is the dry side. So it's a whole lot different, that portion of the trail, compared to farther down south. I pulled this off of, a, I believe it's off the Pacific Crest Trail website, but it's an elevation profile showing all the ups and downs on the Pacific Crest Trail. And at the very top part of that are the Washington State section. So in section H, for example, you gain almost six miles, you lose almost five miles, and you gain for that whole section 4,000 feet. And probably the reason is that starts at the Columbia River, which is not too far away from, from uh, the level of the seawater. Um, next section, again, a lot of up and down. Section K almost six miles up and six miles down through that section. One of the first sections we went through is, is at the bottom of the, of the map here is over, Mount, over the shoulder of Mount Adams. And I, another view of that map and, and then uh, onward to the Goat Hills. We did not uh, take any sunscreen. <laughs> you can see we went without uh, shirts whenever we could. The packs are very heavy there. A couple of pictures of uh, Mount Adams. Have to be there when the snow was flashing off, off the top of it. We spent a lot of the early part of our trip in a misty rain. They say we were in the clouds a lot. Very important to take good care of your feet. We had a lot of a lot of melting snow. We were walking in a lot of wet snow, a lot of mud. And about halfway through, I ended up getting trench foot and took me out of action for about five days. <clears throat> That's what I used to look like. <laughs> we carried uh, down down sleeping bags which don't dry out very well. So if you're going to go into an area that's wet, um, it's pretty important to either probably not use a down sleeping bag. I'll just point that out. Crossing over Mount Adams, shoulder Mount Adams, we were walking on snow. 
I saw a friend of mine afterwards. He said I looked like the character in Little Big Man with the way my face looked after getting all that done. <laughs> and this is the character from Little Big Man. <laughs> the picture from the Goat Rocks area. If you're there and when the just after the snow melts, the flowers are crazy. And this is a flower field we, we crossed over. Mm. I think this picture is in the North Cascades. The year we were out there, Mount Baker was erupting. If you're old enough to remember that, that's, that's the year we were there. We started out with our 80 pound packs struggling to do 10 miles a day. And we, like I say, we packed in 10 days worth of food, but we, uh, by the time we got to where we were going for it, it only took eight days. So we had, ended up carrying extra food. So the next time we said, well, we'll only carry seven days worth of food. And we got there in five days. It kept going like that. So we, I think I ended up with a pack around 25 pounds. I threw away everything I didn't absolutely need. And the last day, uh, Rick and I crossed the Canadian border. We did 31 miles that day, eight of it in the dark. I'm gonna talk about the Wind River Range in Wyoming. It can be a good trail, could be muddy with snow. You enter from the road out of Pinedale, Wyoming. The elevation starts at, at, at the highway at 7,200, goes up to 12,000. Mountain weather, our fishing success was poor. A lot of times we used to go in uh, early in the year before everyone else got in there. And we'd get there too soon, the lakes were still frozen over or really uh, no bugs out to feed the fish. And so we didn't have very good success. I did take an inflatable boat on, on the second trip. That didn't help me with my fishing at all. No restrictions on camping. Um, we saw a deer and I saw the only mountain lion I've ever seen. We, our second trip there, we, we went with a dog and I sat in the camp after the dog and, and the owner had left. And uh, mountain lion came down and looked down the trail at them. Here's a map of Wyoming. You can see where the red dot is, is where the Wind River Range is. You can see it's a little bit rugged with a, with a lot of lakes. And I don't know if you can tell, but, oh, that didn't work. Right where my pointer is, is where you can get a, you can ride your car all the way to, and then you're hiking up from there. So you, you gain elevation pretty fast. And here's a view of the lakes in that area. Got a few pictures. Got my fishing pole ready. One of my companions threw a 10 pound rock in the other companion's pack and when the, he found it, he slashed his tent while we were down fishing. <laughs> And uh, always a worthy picture to show. Sawtooth Wilderness area in Idaho. It can, this can be a good trail. It can be muddy with snow, dusty when dry. First time we entered from the west side, the second time from the east side. The elevation is 6,500 at the end at Redfish Lake. On the, on the west side, it might be a little bit lower. And we get up to 12,000. 756,000 acres of, of wilderness, 700 plus miles of trails. Let's say mountain weather. We did have some fishing success. No restrictions on camping. We saw deer. Going off trails, not very well recommended. There's a lot of mountains with shale. You can see where Boise is, right down here where the star is. And up here is where the Sawtooth Range is. So that's where we're talking about. Some of you have heard of Sun Valley, Idaho, and it's right over in this area, not too far from a lot of uh, recreational activity. On the left is the Sawtooth Wilderness. Um, on the very upper right of the Sawtooth Wilderness, you see a lake there, it's Redfish Lake. And you can actually catch a boat going in and out from the very end all the way up to the lodge on the upper end of that lake, which is very handy. 
There's a close up of that section. It's from our fir first trip. I, I showed this picture because uh, very often early on we would carry steaks in and corn on the cob, for example, as you can see in this picture uh, for the first day feast. Rugged country. It's a snowball fight in action. Uh, say we, on this trip we got in there early and we uh, were in the snow. Very rugged area. <laughs> on our way out, we found a hot spring. And after a, a week in the cold and some rain, it was very welcome. I think we walked out in a, in a misty rain. Our second trip into the Sawtooth was uh, 14 years ago. Later in the year. You can see it'd be very difficult to do any kind of cross country trips off of trail in this area. Oh, I think this is a video. I want to share that it's the only video I've got. Can you all hear that? No. No? No. That may not be worth doing then. So he was taking a dump against a large boulder, and the boulder started to move. And he leaped away, and the boulder fell right on top of where he was. <laughs> he lost they lost the trial is buried under the rock Showing us his injuries. And then later on, he, he tells that the, 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 the rock was two feet thick or three feet thick, eight feet long and four feet tall behind him. This is the boat ride coming out of the, out of the park and up to the lodge at the end of our, of our, of our hike. Yellowstone National Park, uh, there's good trail or dispersed hiking. It's very flat. You're, we were following a river valley, uh, generally followed the thoroughfare section of the Yellowstone River at the southeast end of Yellowstone Lake, elevation at 7,500 feet. Mountain weather, we had snow in late July. The fishing was great, but they had a rule. You couldn't keep anything over 15 inches. And, out of the 200 fish we caught, we kept five, and some of those, because they died, they were not under 15 inches. Once you hit the boundary of the park, the rule ends. And so there were people horse camping at, just outside the park with, in there for fishing. Very strict campground reservations, as, as there is up in Pictured Rocks and really all the national parks. We saw moose, grizzly, deer. You can't go hiking in there until after July 15th because of the bears are just getting up, and they're pretty grouchy when they first get up. Uh, I saw white pelicans. There was a lot of residual fire damage from the fires that were in the 1980s when we were there in 1993. It's a map of Yellowstone and Yellowstone Lake. That just in the southern corner below the lake is where we were back country hiking. This also shows all the other trails that are available in Yellowstone. Here's a close-up of, of where we were at down in the right hand, lower right-hand corner. Doing some dispersed hiking there. Um, you see there's pretty good hills in that area. 
Um, there's our group. A lot of burned out trees. That black dot in the middle there is a bear. Back then we didn't have zoom lenses on our cameras. Fishing on the river. Some white pelicans. We went hiking in Alaska in two different places. The Kenai Peninsula was our first trip. Um, I think we were out there for five days. It was flat. It wasn't very dark at night. We did a 39-mile section along Resurrection Pass. Elevation between 500 to 2,500. Mountain weather is possible. The fishing was poor. We saw king salmon. We tried eating a, a red salmon, but it was rotten. Uh, there are supposed to be moose and bears, except there are no deer up there. Did not see any game when we were there. There's a very low tree line. And here's the Kenai Peninsula. You can see at the very top of the, of the map, it's, it's where Anchorage is. So we're coming just south of Anchorage. And that's probably about 50 miles south of Anchorage, so certainly by car. The trail we were on was Trail number three, the Resurrection Pass Trail. It's in the Chugach National Forest. The screenshot here of uh, king salmon, and uh, fortunately they weren't biting because we weren't allowed to fish for those. We did see uh, a lot of flowers. We saw some small mammals and perhaps some kind of a, a partridge or something. Here's the tree line at, and we were sitting at 1,500 feet elevation. So nothing much grows higher than that. Here's the red salmon we tried eating. It was probably at the last possible lake before it couldn't go any farther and it was on its dying breath anyway, I think. It's Juneau Creek heading into Juneau Lake which is where our, our trip ended. Here we are at 1.45 p.m. cooking dinner. It's still light out. So I'll just say we were disappointed with the game we saw. And when we got out, we, we heard that a mile down the road from where we came out, a guy had gotten mauled the night before. So at that point, we were kind of glad we didn't see any bears. He was out fishing at midnight. Of course, it was, like I said, it's still light out. And the bear chased him all the way back to his car and got him. Uh, Alaska up in Denali. Game trails only, it's flat, a bear can is required. Elevation is about 7,500, mountain weather. The night before we got there, they had six inches of snow and then six inches of rain and it um, wiped out some roads. But for our purposes, the main thing it did was make all the water really cloudy within the park. We were told no normal visibility of, of the mountain is three out of 30 days a month. Uh, we did not have that problem. Again, not much darkness. Fishing is poor. You're assigned a zone for three to five people. It could be 25 square miles. There's no ve personal vehicle entry. You take their bus to your zone. There are moose, grizzly, and black bear, caribou, fox, wolf, doll, sheep. There are no deer up in that part of Alaska for sure. We didn't see any game when we were out there. Only one on the bus where we saw them all. Very low tree line again, maybe 2,000 feet. Here's where Denali is in Alaska, north of Anchorage, probably a couple hours. Here's the bus route going into the end of the park, and there, there is a lodge at the very end as well. 
If you can see these yellow lines on here, those are the zones where you can, you're, you are assigned your team. So I've got over on the left side, a purple line there showing this zone was about, our first zone was about five miles deep and probably about five or six miles wide. And that's where we were, uh, we were assigned to be. So we weren't bothering anybody else and nobody else was bothering us. Later on, we, and that was for the first two nights. The last three nights we were in there, we had this zone and it went back about 18 miles. It was probably uh, two or three miles wide and along the Sanctuary River. <clears throat> this is a bear we saw on the bus ride going in. Not a very good shot of a, of a moose. A doll sheep, caribou. This is where we are. This is our zone. <laughs> this is our kitchen, which was pretty far away from where we were camping. This is Mount McKinley. Um, I think it's still called Mount McKinley. It might be called Mount Denali by now. This is closer to 11.30 at night, so it was getting a little bit different, a little bit different look to it. So our tents are off there on the left-hand side, way off in the distance. Um, you can see how, how barren it is. We never saw any bears that whole time there, and then we got on the bus to go to our next place, and this bear walked in front of the bus for about a half mile. And... Uh, and when he got off in the woods, he disappeared to that pucker brush like you see over on the right, which was all around us where we were camping the first two nights. And we said, well, there's no bears around here. Although we saw tracks everywhere, we didn't see the bears. If you look at the truck tires on that, on that truck, they are taller than the bear is when it's just sitting down there. So they can hide pretty easily. This is where we were on our last three days. I got up, you know, we hadn't seen any games, so I got up early one morning to see if I could spot some. And this is what it looked like at 4.20 in the morning. I did not see anything. I thought maybe they're sleeping all day or something. In this section, we were wading through this brush like this. There are no, like I say, no trails. Um, a little bit of a joke here. You had to have bear cans, and we packed up Jim with three bear cans for this demonstration photo on the right-hand lower side. But uh, there's not enough room in there to, to pack for five days, I can tell you that. And I was kind of hungry by the time we, we got out of there. I had cotton pants and they did not hold up well in the brush. Glacier National Park uh, and the Waterton, it's, those combined together are called the Waters and Glacier International Peace Park. And we've been in both places. Um, it's up and down depending on the trail being used. Glacier is 1,583 square miles, over 700 miles of trails. Elevation 500 to 10,000 generally. Mountain weather, we got snowed on in late August one year. There's, there's really no point in going in June because it's not hardly open yet. There's still snow everywhere. When the first year we went out there, we had a lower elevation camp for the first night. We said, well, we wanted to go up higher. Let's go up and check it out. And it was water running in a sheet over it about three inches deep. Uh, the outhouse up there is was uh, half buried in snow. And I will say the national parks generally do have outhouses placed everywhere. Uh, that's the one good thing. Fishing is good in glacier. There's moose, bears, deer, goats, sheep. Outstanding beauty. It's a, it's a backpackers national park. There's one road going through over going to this going to the Sun Road, and that's a, a gorgeous drive, but. Um, you can't see much of the park from there. 
very strict campsite reservation. Some sites don't have any trees to hang your, your, bear, your food bags from, and so they require bear cans if you have a reservation for those sites. There's a map of Montana, and up there where it says Blackfeet Indian Reservation, that area is the area where Glacier Park is. You can see on this map, it's a close up and you can, you can see the terrain a little bit too. This one shows the Waterton Lakes National Park up above Glacier National Park. This is a Waterton by itself. These are all the trails and campsites within Glacier. <laughs> and the water, early in the year, the water is flowing a lot. And you'll see a lot of places with waterfalls. Here's a food bag. Um, I say you have to hang that up so that bears or other animals can't get it at night, especially. But even if you're sitting around having lunch, it might be not, if you're gonna walk away from it, might not be bad at least to hang it up on a branch. Keep the uh, squirrels out of it. Uh, here's a picture of a otter going after some fish. It's kind of hard to see him there. We had, we had some fish on a stringer and he was interested. <laughs> Some of these are screenshots from very old photos. Here's a fish that Jim got at Glen Lake. Um, at that lake, it was a very big lake. He got a lake trout. Here's a bridge design I thought I'd share with you. <laughs> you hang on to that strap going across. <laughs> Lots of waterfalls. Lots of beautiful scenery. The moose. It's called bear grass. It comes up every seven years and we were there on the right year. That sticks up about four feet tall. Oh my gosh. A few more water question. Craftsman. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. I'm sorry, I was talking to my wife. Oh. <laughs> you see a lot of the terrain uh, is very steep. And at the bottom of those hills are a lot of shale, which is very hard to hike on. So there's no trying to go anywhere different than where the trail is. You don't make any kind of gains. One year we were out there they, and we went through, uh, I think it's Pythagorean Pass or something like that. And there's a tunnel there uh, going from one side of the mountain to the other. And, and uh, a month or two earlier, uh, people were up there with a horse and a lady uh, fed her horse some snow and the horse jumped over that railing and she had her hand wrapped around it and she fell down the horse they both fell down about 200 feet and, and perished they rescued the, the lady's body but they left the horse's body there and there was like chain gang of people coming up from five miles away to see if there were still bears coming out to feed on that horse This is some of the terrain in that area. You can see you can see the shale, how you know really unstable it would be to try and climb anywhere except on the trail. You can see the a person standing on the trail way back on the slope of that red section. So this is up in Waterton. 
and we were getting, approaching our campsite late at night. It was it wasn't quite dark yet, but it was getting close. And we ended up following a game trail down and end up coming down off this cliff. We didn't even, we thought we were on the trail. We thought that this is first. And uh we saw it the next morning and we were kind of shocked. We never would have done it. The trails in Canada are not like the trails in the US. They challenge you. Here was the path going back down that we we figured when we, we first looked at this one, this is a mile mile hike in, we said we can't do that. He said, Well maybe it's easier from the top. There's a thousand foot of drop, nine inch wide path. In some places you had to kind of jump over gaps and hold on with both hands. Undoable. We found an ice cave, took a few pictures. We got a little bit of snow on us. And as we were leaving, we got some uh, good scenery. We finally found a way to get out of there. This is a picture from uh, near the lodge in Waterton. The, the Waterton uh, Lake goes seven miles down from Waterton down into into the national in the Glacier National Park. You can take a ferry from Waterton all the way down to there. We've taken that several times, uh, either as tourists or to go in backpacking or to go in for day hikes. And here's the lodge. It's an old railroad lodge mounted up on this hill. And it's a great place to stay if you ever get a chance to go that way. It's a beautiful area. The Beartooth Absaroka Wilderness is one of our favorite spots. I think we've been there maybe a dozen, dozen times or so. It's up and down depending on the trail being used. Elevation about 6,000 to 10,000. Mountain weather. We've got snow down in late August one year. One year we went in in late June and we were pinned down by rain in the 30s for like two days, just trying to stay warm and dry, hiding under a tarp. The fishing is good depending on the elevation and the time of year. If you go in early, fishing is better at low elevations. Later, it's better at higher elevations because it's not really near at high elevations, it's not spring yet. There's no bugs. But the bugs that are there are, are functional in the 30s and they will attack. We've seen elk, deer, goats. We've never seen a bear, but we have seen plenty of indication that they are there. We've seen buffalo on the road near the entry point. This is not very far from Yellowstone's northeast entry. It's good beauty. Lots of trails, the terrain is easy to pick off trail routes and go where you won't see anybody for a week. It's not crowded, although we had some friends go out there last year and they said last year it was crowded. Well, amazing. Can't do anything else but go camping. There are no campsite reservations. There's no restrictive limits on the party size. You can camp anywhere away from water. It's a trail called the Beaten Path that goes through the wilderness. It's 26 miles end to end. The same map I showed you earlier, only it was Yellowstone, and in this area is the section where, on the southern part, south central part of it, is where the Bear Tooth Absaroka Wilderness is. Here again, you're coming out of Cook City on the left side here, and we take off usually from here and head up this way. And there's all kinds of trails to follow up there and you can easily go, at least on the uh, southwest side, you can easily cross country about anywhere you want. You can see there's a lot of lakes. A lot of them have been stocked. This is at the other side, northeast of the last map. 
This is a trail called the Beaten Path. I stole this out of a book I have. Shows all the lakes on this 26 mile trail. We've seen people doing the whole thing, a day of training for marathons. And we're struggling to go from one to the area. There's the terrain map from those two spots, the two stars you can see. So there's some elevation gain on one side and it drops off uh, farther on the other side. I shared this one because what happens when, when you don't plan and your buddies say, you need more food, you need more food. And he ended up carrying in two bags full of food. It's my, uh, one of my younger brothers. Some scenery. This is up at 10,000 feet. You're pretty much above the tree line up there. It's on Fossil Lake. This is near Dewey Lake on the down on the northeast side, heading down. It's on Lake of the Falls. Here's a picture showing some of the falls in the background. Took uh, th four of my brothers and three nephews and my friend and his son on that trip. It's a waterfall on that trip. Drops about 200 feet. Back at Lake of the Falls. That's Rimrock Lake there. This is heading out of Rimrock Rock Lake, uh, about a mile through this gorge. It's very interesting, very loud, a lot of water flow, especially earlier in the year. One more trip at Lake, one more shot at Lake of the Falls. We like that that picture. So some considerations if you're going to go hiking or backpacking out out west and early in the season, uh, which is July. There's more bugs, there's more water flow if you like to watch water flow. There's more flowers and there's maybe more weather. Later in the season, there's fewer bugs, but perhaps the uh, fire season has started and the year we went up to Waterton, everything in, the, in Montana, Idaho, Wyoming and Colorado was shut down due to fires. You couldn't go in overnight anywhere even if you didn't light fires or have a stove. Clothing, uh, synthetic clothing provides good wind protection, dries quickly, provides sun protection, fairly good bug defense. Good hiking shoes are good to have anywhere, but out there, if you're gonna be hiking on rock, you wanna have a stiffer sole for sure. I use Crocs for water crossing and camp shoes. They dry fast, very handy for that. They're a little bulky. Always use sunscreen. I wear a large hat too. Down sleeping bags don't dry quickly, but they're lighter. I don't use down except for my jacket that I wear, but I wear a poncho if I'm wearing that and it's any kind of weather. I always tell our guys be prepared for any kind of weather because it can be cold and then sometimes it is. And you can get heavy rain, you can get sleet, hail, snow, anything. And it could last for days, so you don't know. We used to carry, carry a lot of Fun food in, carry loaf of bread, loaves of bread, steaks, whatever, head of lettuce. But freeze dried food is easier to prepare and there's little cleanup afterwards. Hang your food along with toothpaste and anything else that's got a lot of odor to it, like deodorant or whatever, high in a tree or use a bear can so you don't get the bears uh, looking for your food. Uh, we use a water bag to carry water up raw water, and then we filter from that rather than sitting down by the stream and filtering everything by that. Uh, they've got hanging filters now that'll hold about three gallons of water, and you fill it full and then hang it up and then let it drip down through the filter as you're going along. If you're not going to filter the water, boil it for five minutes. And we do that often if we're going to use freeze dried food, we'll boil the water for five minutes and then dump that in for our freeze dried food since we're boiling it anyway. That's all I got. Thank you for watching.
Are you taking questions, Larry? I'll be happy to. Hey, Larry, this is Eric. How much does your pack weigh now compared to what it was when you used to start out at 80 pounds? Probably in the neighborhood of 45 pounds. Anyone else? Larry, in 2002, I was out in Glacier also. Do you remember where you hiked? In 2002, we, we uh, started out at the Chief Joseph Trailhead and we hiked over the top. Coming out near Waterton, we, um, we did have an incident that year. One of my, my buddy that had the fish, uh, the giant lake trout there, was, you saw, if you saw that picture, he was wearing waders. A little later on that trip, he, we were fishing uh, in the Kootenay Lake area and he uh, was wading where a stream went into the lake. He stepped into a hole and it filled his waders and it kept carrying him out into the <laughs> lake and we were lucky that he didn't, we didn't drown him. Um, we had to help him back. We were about a mile from our, our campsite. We had to help him get back there. And uh, we ended up uh, beside Kootenay Lakes. We went up the other side for a day hike. And then we left going out to Waterton. So that was our 2002 hike. Great memory. Larry. Um... I've been studying this for a week. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, I have a I have a comment. Um, recently, you broke your foot while you were hiking. Um, could you could you tell me about that? I was trying to remember. It was like four or five days you hiked on a broken foot because you you couldn't get any help, right? So I had. Was uh, that? We were on day three of an eight day hike, and I we were cross countrying, and I tried to step from one rock to another and I had my my hiking stick and I used it to kind of support my weight well it collapsed and so I ended up falling into a hole well, uh, between between some rocks and the, the leg that fell down there didn't break it was the one that was still up by my shoulder when I went down and that one uh, it snapped my small leg bone down by the by my ankle so we, I had three rookies with me. We were in the middle of nowhere, and I could, yeah, I could call for a helicopter. We did have a satellite phone, but then I'd be leaving them all on their own to fend for themselves until they got out. And I thought, well, as long as it's, I can still feel it, and as long as it's, you know, I can still getting circulation, I'll go for it. And I thought it was just a bad sprain, so I took it. I took it a little bit easy here and there, but. Getting over there. Yeah. yeah, Larry Jim Heaton here. I, I loved your comment about um, really durable soles on on boots. Of course, it depends on how much you got on your back, but uh, you do see people on some rugged terrain with uh, what I kind of call little sneaker hiking shoes, and they're really uh, they have a very bad day. Yeah, I got. I have one other comment too. I. I've hiked on all these trails that other people have built, and a lot of them have built these trails a long time ago. A lot of them uh, were horse people, and so I don't uh, complain too much about the horses, but I always kind of figure building this trail is a, a way to give back or give it forward, I guess, for what these people did for us. That's my thought on that. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody else with a question? comment? Well, Larry, uh, I give you kudos. I can't imagine. <laughs> I can't imagine. Well, you know, it's been a lot of fun. I'm, I'm not sure I'm done yet. I think I'm not, but we'll see. Yeah, well, we're, we're planning on you hiking a long time yet. <clears throat> Larry, I have a question. Yes. Um, I, was, I was in Denali last year and I was asking about trails and they said there are no trails 
and we put the bus in and they said you could get off wherever you wanted and go wherever you wanted. So is that something new or? Um, I, I pulled those zone maps off of their website today. So that is not, you can get off and go wherever you want within your zone. Okay, maybe that's just a day hike thing and not a true they, overnight. Yes, perhaps you're right on that. Okay. They, and they do have multiple buses going in and out. And oh, yeah. I, I guess it may take a couple hours to get all the way to the end. Uh, to the the bus ride alone was frightening enough. <laughs> Uh, any other comments, questions? I don't know. Does anybody need a stand up or a move around? <laughs> <laughs> it's been very, very interesting. Uh, and you can tell a lot of your pictures were older, but um, we got the picture. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, is a lot better the... nowadays. <clears throat> yes. Yes. So I'm standing up for a minute. Anyone standing up? And uh, we thank you all for coming. And when we normally have a speaker, we invite people to stay for the business meeting. Or if you would rather uh, leave uh, the meeting, you're welcome to leave. So um, I'm going to stand up, <laughs> move around. <laughs> all right. All right. So um, we again, thank you, Larry. Uh, we've heard when I'm hiking with you, I hear a lot of these stories and you told all the glorious things tonight. You didn't tell all the things you told us, <laughs> have told me over the past. I think you're muted. I think I covered everything as far as, you know, <laughs> go in July and August and Okay, all right. Don't go in June. <laughs> all right. Take bug dope. <laughs> all right, thanks for inviting us. Oh, you're welcome. Come again. We will. Someday we'll be in real together. Well, yeah, yeah one of these days. <laughs> we're these getting days. pretty good at Zoom now. <laughs> yep, we're, it's getting better. Yeah. I noted Larry didn't tell about the time they lost the hiker. <laughs> he didn't tell all of his good stories. <laughs> we didn't lose him. He walked away. And luckily, you somehow walked back together, correct? I found him in town while I was on the phone calling the, for, for uh, a search party. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that was great. That was great. So on our, uh, again, welcome, and 